When we balance a regular chemical equation, we have to follow the law of conservation of mass, which says the mass that goes into a reaction has to equal the mass that comes out of a reaction. The mass of the products is the same as the mass of the reactants. With redox reactions, that's still true, and we have an additional requirement where we have to balance the charge that comes from the electrons being transferred from one place to another. When you're balancing redox reactions, typically we start from a skeletal reaction like the following. This skeletal reaction may or may not be a redox reaction. If you're unsure, you have to check. And you can do that by looking for oxidation number changes between the reactant side and the product side. In this example, the easiest oxidation numbers to check would come from the chloride ion and the Cl2 molecule. The oxidation state for Cl- is negative 1. And the oxidation state for Cl2, which is chlorine in its elemental state, is 0. There's been an oxidation number change, therefore you have a redox reaction. Now that you know that you have a redox reaction, there are a couple of different ways to balance this. In this example, we'll go through the method of balancing by half reactions. And to balance by half reactions, you have to split your redox reaction into two components, a reduction component and an oxidation component. You could certainly check this by working at the oxidation numbers for each of the species involved and seeing which one gains electrons and which one loses electrons. But there's often an easier way, which is to simply group things visually. The manganese goes with the manganese and the chloride goes with the chlorine. In any event, once you have half reactions, what you can do is you can follow a series of steps to balance redox equations. The steps are listed on the left-hand side of the screen. And the first four steps need to be done for both half reactions. We will start with the reduction half reaction first. So the first step we follow is to balance everything except the hydrogens and oxygens by inspection. In this case, that just means manganese and manganese. There's one manganese on the reactant side and one on the product side, so it's balanced. Step two is to balance oxygens by adding water. There are four oxygens on the reactant side, which means we need to add four waters to the product side. Adding four waters provides four oxygens. The third step is to balance hydrogens with H+. In this case, we only have hydrogen showing up on the product side. Four H2s, so eight hydrogens, need to be balanced with eight H pluses. The final step that we need to follow for each half reaction is step four, balancing charge with electrons. Charges can only be balanced by adding electrons which have a negative charge, which means you have to add the electrons to the side with the most positive charge. The reactant side has eight single positive charges coming from the H plus ions, and it has a single negative charge coming from the MnO4 minus ion. Eight positives and one negative gives you seven positives. The right-hand side, the product side of the equation, has two pluses coming from the Mn2 plus ion, and it has no additional charge coming from the waters, which are neutral. To bring this into balance, we need to add five electrons to the reactant side. We have five negatives, eight positives, and one negative, combining to give us a total of two positives, and that equals the charge on the product side which is also two plus. And at this point, we have to turn our attention to the other half reaction. We start by balancing everything except hydrogen and oxygen, in this case, chlorine. There are two chlorines on the product side and one chlorine on the reactant side, so we need to balance that by inspection. Now we have two chlorines on either side. The next step is to balance oxygen with water. There are no oxygens, we do not need to add water. The same is true for balancing hydrogens with H+. No hydrogens, therefore no H+. The final step is to balance the charge with the electrons. There are two negatives on the reactant side, and no negatives or positives on the product side. Therefore we have to add two electrons to the product side. And now we have two balanced half reactions. 
The next thing we have to do is recognize that reduction and oxidation don't happen on their own. They happen simultaneously with the oxidation step providing the electrons that allows the reduction step. And that means the number of electrons that are produced by the oxidation have to equal the number of electrons required for the reduction. In this case, we don't have that. We have five electrons in the reduction step and only two electrons being produced. So we have to multiply these reactions uh, by different values until we get a common number of electrons. And you can simply do that by cross multiplying by the number of electrons. Five electrons in the reduction step, that means we multiplied the oxidation step by five. Two electrons in the oxidation step, that means we multiply the reduction step by two. And now we've completed step five, equalize the number of electrons. The next step is to combine these half reactions into a total overall reaction. And we do that by adding the two half reactions together. The way that we add half reactions, or the way that we add reactions in general, is by writing a single reaction arrow. On the reactant side, we include all of the reactants from both reactions. And on the right hand side, on the product side of this reaction arrow, we write all of the products from both of the reactions. And now we've completed step six, combining the half reactions. The next step, step seven, is to cancel any like terms and simplify the reaction if possible. And in this case, the only thing that shows up on both sides is 10 electrons and they will cancel each other out exactly the way an algebraic expression would cancel. And now we're left with an overall balanced redox equation. Redox reactions that are happening in acidic solutions are described as happening in acid. This can be identified by the presence of the H plus ions in the reaction equation. There is another situation where we can have redox reactions as well. Occasionally, a reaction will happen only in basic solution. And if it's happening in basic solution, then obviously it's ridiculous if there are any H pluses lying around. So we have to neutralize the acid with OH minus, a form of base. This would be our additional extra step. What we have on the screen is balanced in acid, but if we were asked a question where the reaction could only happen in base, we would have to do an additional step. This reaction is balanced in acid, but if the question asks us to balance it in base, we could do so. The way we would do that is by neutralizing any acid with OH-. The equation we have currently is mass balanced, and it is charge balanced. So if we want to neutralize the acid, all we have to do is add enough OH- to neutralize the acid, and we have to add it to both sides in order to keep our charge and mass balance consistent.H there are 16 H pluses already, we need to add 16 OH minuses to neutralize the acid. And to keep our mass and charges the same, we need to add the same 16 OH minuses to the product side. It's important to remember that H plus and OH minus react to give water. We've added our 16 OH minuses, and that's produced 16 waters on the reactant side. And now we have a situation where we have water showing up on both sides of the equation. Again, we just simplify this algebraically. And now we have a reaction that is completely balanced in basic solution. There are no leftover H pluses floating around, and we do see some OH minus base on the product side of the reaction.